Every two years, a group of men and women gather at the northern edge of the Welsh mountains. They're here to race one of the hardest ultramarathons in the world, the Berghaus Dragon's Back Race. What I'm doing here is a very good question. That's, you know, <laughs> that is a very good question. What I hope to be doing here is running for five days in the Welsh mountains and finishing happy and healthy, um, 315 kilometres that way. No, that way. <laughs> Buongiorno, <laughs> here we are in Galles, <laughs> ready to start, <laughs> a new adventure, um, we'll see how it goes, uh, I hope to get to the end, <laughs> I am quite nervous. <laughs> no, I'm not really nervous yet, no, I'm just eager to start. Nerves 80, excitement 20, but, um, but definitely excitement there as well, I can't wait to get up into the mountains and, and just, just be in the scenery. Over five days, the runners will cover 315 kilometers with 15,500 meters of ascent, almost twice the height of Everest. 223 runners start day one, taking on the Carnedi, Trivan, the Glidders, Crib Goch and Snowden. I'm here to run <laughs> and run and run, <laughs> keep running and eat. <laughs> um, I ran it back in 2015. And so my goals, I guess, will be to do it again, but better. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, hi. Good to get going. Oh, yes. It would be good to be the first female across the line. Um, it's possible. Um, my calf blew up a couple of weeks ago. So there is this little thought in my head that it, that could happen and, and then I'm going to be in trouble. This morning. Good. Up to now. But this is only checkpoint three. Off to four. I was here two years ago and I tried to uh, slay the dragon that time and um, I managed to uh, get injured. So I had to come back and finish business here. Yeah. yeah, I like pain. <laughs> I fear I might have gone a little bit too quick down there. Once my fat carcass has got up the hill, it really wants to come down, so I'm struggling, holding it back <laughs> on the downhills. It's hard than it's in someone's nature. Just uh, you see someone going past, you want to keep up, don't you? But it's going to be that's what's going to ruin this race for me. If I carry on, I've got to slow down. That was great. As my 13-year-old uh, daughter would say, that was lit, which I think means good. Every time you look up, it's just, it's jaw-droppingly beautiful. And a lot of people have kind of run this day, especially, enough that they're kind of, they get, seem to be used to it, but I'm not. And so every time I look up, it's just, it, Wales unfolds underneath me and you just sort of feel like you're, you're on top of the world. It's great. Not running this bit. <laughs> oh, hilarious. <laughs> You've had all day to think of that joke. <laughs> it's really high, you know. Straight into the dragon's mouth. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I shouldn't have come, but I wanted to go anyway. My state in my uh, red blood cells too low. The doctor said you shouldn't go. But 
bubble come and it's beautiful. It's going a bit blustery. It is, yeah, it's a little bit hairy up there. What about crib dog? Uh, yeah, crib dog would be fun, wouldn't it? I'll, uh, I'll just stay on the ridge this time, I think. Is it feeling like a nice warm up day? Yeah. Yeah, a few more hours and the legs will be ready. <laughs> <laughs> What I get out of running probably is endorphins. <laughs> I'm so happy when I go running, I'm just happy. Life generally can be quite, quite busy. When I'm running this event, I feel amazingly free and all I've got to do, life's very simple, all I've got to do is run. Get up, run, and I love it. With 40 kilometers run, the leaders reach the knife edge ridge of Krib Goch. As the wind picks up, and the clag comes down. How are you doing, Sabrina? I'm good, thank you, yep. I've done all the training that I can, but that's not, you know, that's not ideal when you live in London and you, you know, you have a young family and you can't get to the mountains as often as you want. But I'm as fit as I've ever been and I'm pretty determined when the mood takes me. Yes. yes. How's it going? It's How's going it? fine, thank you. I will upgrade fine to brilliant once we're off Crib Goch. <laughs> Honestly, I'm worried about the navigation aspect of it, but I will do my best. I've got posh watch. <laughs> Although, my two-year-old took the charger out of my bag this morning and put it in her bed. Good. <gasps> yeah, any words for us on Crib Goch? Crib Goch is like some sort of hell. 2015 race winner Jim Mann powers his way to a day one lead. Other runners miss the mandatory cutoff time, marking the end of their race. In nine hours, 27 minutes and two seconds, Sabrina Vergy is first woman over the line. Feeling good. Day one done. All was going well. Weather was all right. <laughs> one of the hardest days I've had in a month since, to be honest, it was yeah, no bloody tough. Because I'm new to this stuff, you know, I'm a scrum half, not a bloody fella in there, so uh, I'll get there maybe eventually. I, I was faced with a wall, it was very well kept, but there was a river, an open river right there, so I just went for a swim then I, and just went straight down the, down the river. So I hope that's not breaking the rules. He didn't, he didn't say anything that you couldn't go swimming. Ooh. Sort of looks like minced meat. Is that fresh, that toe? Yes, that's the dragon's back toe. But it's okay. I think you're in quite good spirits. Yeah, I feel good. I'm tired, but I feel good. Right, I'm going to get a change, so you're going to tune up. Sixteen hours after starting, some runners are still on the course. When did you hit the wall, Peter? I didn't hit the wall, everything went wrong today. I got lost for two and a half hours, I couldn't find the checkpoint. I, I panicked, basically. <laughs> it never happened. But, so, I think this is it. I think I started in the, on the wrong foot anyway. I wasn't physically ready for something like this. The first time I, I don't finish something. <laughs> But there's always a first time, I suppose, when one learns. It's been a long day in the Rinox today. Um, some, today and tomorrow are the, are the big days that get rid of get rid of people if you're going to finish. Most people who get through the next two days get through the whole lot, so it's, uh, it's a big day. I'm rough. Dragon's back is really hard because it's lots of going up and down. You have to navigate yourself. Um, there's no path. You've got to think like a sheep and it's you never know what you can expect and um, for me it's, it's even harder because I'm from the Netherlands where it's completely flat. So I was training running up and down stairs and running up and down our hill which is 25 meters.
Any legs as long as that to get over this? Very evident here. Building up from the last couple of days, it's been um, my shins here and all feeling the strain of too many sausage rolls over the years, you know. But apart from that, you know, I just got to slow down a bit, just keep it, keep the lid on the pace, and and hope to get through because all I want to do is finish this bloody race. Brutal morning. I think I've been I've been found out. <laughs> Mountains. Mountains won. Greek sports reporters nil this morning. Because I've got no idea what I'm doing. And I, I go, arse over what's it. Or what's it over what's it. <laughs> A lot. I came to running quite late, actually. I came to running, I sort of, it was the, the old story about getting to your 30s and, well, basically getting fat. And I had a little, kind of yellow little tube of fat in my golf shirt. And so I suddenly realised that the, you know, my options were stop eating what I want, or get fat, or start exercising. And the get fat option was quite tempting. I'd just been with a, with a boxing reporter called Steve Bunce and he goes, Vass, he said to me, I'm getting older, I'm getting fatter, and I'm getting happier. And I thought, well, you know, I'll go, I'll go the Buncey route. But then I, I, started, I started exercising and I didn't really like it. And then the first time I ran outside, I thought, wow, this just is so liberating. <laughs> I'm alright when it's straight climbing, it's this stuff, I struggle underfoot. Lovely since the clouds went away, at least you can look up and see that and it gives a little bit of, I don't know, just a little bit of power to your legs. But I'm still going, I'm still moving forward. Did your you lady give you a pep talk? Ah, she was great, she was great. Don't. <laughs> You're getting me going. Here. Hey, have a good one, Vassos. Thank you. Salty egg. It's that simple. Nice little salty egg. Sorts you out. Bacon and egg risotto balls. So it's a bit savoury. Vegan sausages. They're really good. Getting a bit sweaty. Oh, yeah, I've been throwing water all over myself, cool myself down. I'm taking this view while you're here. It's good, isn't it? Ooh, that was a bit of a climb. Still a bit to go. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Think of things more fun than climbing a rhino. <laughs> Marcus Scotney secures a second place finish for day two, one hour and ten minutes behind race leader Jim. How was your day, Paula? Hard. Good. Yeah? Doing well? Yeah, still in good spirits. Looking forward to tomorrow. A hundred and seventy runners remain in the race. It's been a hard afternoon. Yeah, Carol's running really well. I could have done without her coming back at me. I took uh, 20 minutes out by the halfway, and then she, she's obviously come in before me. So. You had a chase on your hands. Oh my god, I didn't need that in this heat. Oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> the mind is willing. The body is willing, apart from that ankle and that knee. 
I've strapped it up. I thought I'd better steer clear of the medical people because they're telling me not to run. Um, and look, it's now 10 to seven. At 10 to six, I couldn't walk. I can now walk. So let's assume that that improvement will continue and I'll be able to run soon. Good luck, buddy. Day three. At 71 kilometers, the longest leg of the race, through the remote and trackless hills of Mid Wales. Yeah, big day ahead. Hard one. This, this Special right, one because I couldn't get bars okay. this one last oh, time. So brilliant. Yeah. Okay, okay. So there's a, there's a morning news. Will be interesting. Okay, brilliant. Let's see how far I get. Will be an emotional moment. Good. So much suffering. Everything's hurting now. Trying to make the cut off. I know I'm never gonna make it. My husband sent me uh, lyrics. To highway to hell. What did that make you think? He's right. This is the highway to hell. It's not even the highway to. It's in the middle of. So uh, I'll keep going. With plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I need to sit down now. This is what cost a lot of time this, this morning, faffing, to try and sort yeah. out my feet. It will be uh, It's alright now, yeah. got into my hands. And uh, about an hour ahead, so. <coughs> I don't know if it was that ankle or the back of that knee or the front of that knee, but I just couldn't. Um, I tried, I just couldn't move at a speed that was um, fast enough to get me to here in time. And then the guys that were dismantling the course kind of and picking up the tree points kind of swept me up and let me know that basically my race was run. I, I sort of knew. You, sort of, you just close your mind to the pain and just keep going. I'm, I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I was just saying to the guys, you know, is there something quite kind of, kind of special about this? You know, when you're like, if you do a, do a hundred mile race, uh, you know, you've got an aid station every five or ten miles giving you a hug and a sandwich, whereas here you're given a, you know, where is it? You're given a map. <laughs> and just go up into those mountains and we'll see you this, this evening. I like that. I like that. You've got to be, you've got to be competent. I like that a lot. Even the most competent can make mistakes. The race tracker shows a red line marking the recommended route between control points two and three. The blue line shows the course taken by race leader Jim. The errors cost him more than an hour, and under rising temperatures, it's a hard push to regain lost time. Is that impressive to see? Pardon? Is that impressive? Yeah, that was impressive. Really. But he's good.
It's always, always hard when you see any of the competitors come in, and particularly when it's your friend. It's harder seeing the emotional pain than the physical pain, and Jim, like many of these people, has invested a lot emotionally to be here uh, in terms of training and commitment, etc. And when it goes wrong, it's really hard, and that's the, the pain you feel. I think that the mental recovery is the most important thing and got to search for the silver lining in everything and I suspect Jim will go away, he'll go into that normal routine of trying to recover and, um, and you look at those splits and think, well I was going well here, how does that compare to Marcus? You know, or maybe I was quicker and just somewhere in that will be some gold. 139 runners remain. Done. Such a lovely day. See a cloud. There was just a dragon sticking up above the cloud. Beautiful. So uh, that looks like Carol setting off. Um, herself and Sabrina at the front of the female race are really close. So. I think they'll be having an amazing race, amazing battle between themselves today. It's certainly the first time the race has been this close and I think today will be fascinating. What's amazing with those stronger athletes is how quickly they recover. The breeder says you've got a few sneaky lines at you. Not sneaky lines. Good lines. Just gonna... Do what I can. Do what I can and enjoy it. If I enjoy it, then it's a lot easier, isn't it? Might be quite nice being in a race. Um, I was always in a race. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a bit full on today, I think. Um, Jim's got kind of 25 minutes behind me, maybe a bit less, so I think it's going to be a bit of a well on race today, but this is kind of what I was I was hoping for. It's disappointing that kind of Jim lost the time making some silly nav error, but it just adds to the racing. Someone who might think, oh yeah, I can run a couple of marathons, that's fine, it's no bother, will find this tough because it's a lot slower, there's a lot more height gain, uh, you don't always know you're going the right way, and then probably there's some mental aspect of it that you've got to do it all again the next day. So it, it is tough. Seven hours. Excuse me, sorry. No, you're right. <coughs> As in, do you know what? It's, I really like being on my own in the countryside, and there was opportunities today to do some interesting navigation, and it paid off. I mean, uh, I've been really slow today. I just couldn't hang on. There's just no chance. And, but I've managed to minimise the effect of that by taking some really good routes. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased there'll be everything to play for tomorrow <laughs> but the problem with tomorrow I don't, I don't think I'll have to have a look but I don't think there's much route choice and if there isn't then uh, she's just quicker.
And what is really tough is if you're only just making the cutoffs, then you're not able to rehydrate, eat enough food, get enough sleep to do it all again the next day. So I think that it is, it's a mega challenge for anyone taking over 10, 11 hours each day. They impress me, because that is, that's tough. Yeah. I've got a spare leg I can borrow. It's an extreme race, so yeah, you get also the emotional extremes. Amazing highs, you get really deep lows, you get everything in between. It's just one of a kind. And when I get back, I, I, it takes me about, I think, two or three weeks to settle into normal life. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this. I think it's the camaraderie. It's just an awesome group of people and um, I look forward to my tent mates and having fun and having an awesome week. It's well, it's like this hot normally. <laughs> it isn't, is it? No. I think you'd be complaining if it was raining as well. Ah, oh, right now I'd like some little rain. Just a drizzle. And then some more sun. He's into a dark place today. Yeah, flat out. Don't go that deep very often. That's it right down there. Nasty, absolutely nasty. Pretty painful. And then the only thing that keeps you going is... I'm not too sure actually. <laughs> God knows. It's, uh, so it makes you question everything. Pondering. You name it. I've probably thought about it this journey to get my mind away from my legs. <laughs> Before a rugby game, my mum used to turn to me and say, No, Pasaran. I had no idea what it meant. No idea. But she was an Italian and French teacher. So I just took it, yeah. But yeah. It's stuck. I still don't know what it means, but I just keep as I'm saying it over in my head, over and over. When it's no pass. Oh. Some really broken people. There's some very tired people on the event team as well. But that is the the nature of the beast. It is a very very challenging race. And I think that we do say one of the world's hardest, and, and we are. And that's the truth of it. So it's certainly a character trait. You need to be able to suck up quite a lot of suffering um, to do something like this. There's very few people, probably the top few men and women who are kind of competitively running through the hills at the moment. Everything hurts now. <laughs> but no stay. Switch something. Get a move. <laughs> Despite racing more than 250 kilometers, just eight minutes separates leading men Marcus and Jim. There are seven minutes between the top two women, Sabrina and Carol. A chasing start where runners are sent off according to the time they have to make up means the first over the finish line wins. You get nervous or something like that? Um, I thought probably not, but then I'm, I'm a bit like, maybe I am a bit. <laughs> 
something, eh? I'm trying to think about it. For the remaining 124 runners, the aim is to safely complete the course and claim a coveted Berghaus Dragon's Back Race finishers trophy. Joe Faulkner is the only man to complete all four Dragon's Back races ever run. Just heading home now, that's it. We're not I'm not trying to move fast anymore, just get it over and done with. Yeah. Couldn't have tried harder, could you? No. No. Last couple of days I've given it everything. Today my hamstrings went. I just couldn't couldn't find my way through it, so now it's a bit of a slog to the finish. But hey. You've been in a race. Definitely, definitely. Made hard work of it, haven't I? Yeah. Should have gone the right way. the ladies, the crunch point is between controls five and six. Carol takes the lead with 19 kilometers left to run. Am I suffering enough for you? Everything, then. yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, definitely. It's a shame because my legs and feet are all fine, quite comfortably doing another five days, but I just can't breathe, so I can't push it. Uh, yeah. uh, everyone's got their own issues, haven't they? Mine is, I've gotten long issues, so you know, just got to accept who you are. <laughs> can't do anything about that. Oh, nice to finish, though. Hopefully, a nice cream at the end. That would be nice. So if you get there before me, if anyone's waiting there for me, they can buy me an ice cream, strawberry. That would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been thinking about today? Dragon. Just dragon. I'm so going to cry in just a few seconds, I think. So nearly there. Oh, good. <laughs> That's so good to know. I'm definitely I'm burning my felt shoes after this. I'm done. Hi, let's get to it. Right this, is my, this is my sprint finish. <laughs> You've been remarkably good for a man who's run from North Wales. <laughs> I don't smell too good though. Might be the dragon's back race, but I smell like the dragon's gooch at the moment. So I'm trying to run away from my own smell. I think the microphone's picking it up. <laughs> it's the first thing.
strong man. Well, he should be for photography and stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose he's got a niche market. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.